Anovar induced kidney disease, how to stay safe. This is a very cool case study of a patient of mine. Everything has been redacted. Special attention to make sure I mitigate any identifying information for this man. It's a 39 year old guy who I just love so much, super cool dude in the country. I've taken care of for years and he has a history of being on testosterone and he loves using some Anovar on and off for years. And we found that with this use, he has this protein, Nuria protein that spills out into his urinalysis. And um, we're gonna talk about this today. I'm gonna give you guys a, a really great layout of you know the mechanism, how we detected it and how it relates to Anovar specifically versus maybe other steroids and of course what I did to protect him moving forward. So this is gonna be really cool. You wanna stay with me on this. My name is Dr. Thomas O'Connor. I'm known as the Anabolic Doc. I am board certified internal medicine expert, ex-primary care doctor. I am on staff of University of Connecticut School of Medicine. So I've dedicated my whole life to men on androgens. Please subscribe and let everyone else know about this because I wanna grow the channel. Anovar is known as one of the safest oral anabolic steroids, been around for decades. Men use it and women use it too, very classic. It's an oral anabolic steroid and we know that it's DHT derived and it's considered a 17 alpha alkylated drug. And the really important piece about this for the chemistry for you guys is that it's really one of its only kind of an oral steroid that is primarily metabolized through the kidney versus the liver. And this is in part why it's developed a reputation for great safety. Now, that's why this, this piece is so important and so many of you guys know that. But at what point can it hurt the kidney itself? Because it is metabolized through the kidney. In this case, it's a 39 year old man. He has a history of, I said, being on testosterone and different steroids, but he loves the combination of Anovar several times a year. Remember, now he's a 39 year old man. He's been on steroids for about 10 years, like a lot of guys, very common. And he utilizes doses of Anovar. He's on TRT, you know, maybe 200 a week of testosterone. He's played around with different doses, likes that dose itself. It's kind of more of a TRT dose. And he adds Anovar, typically about 40 to 60 milligrams. And he plays around with that dose over the years and he runs it for six weeks, 12 weeks maybe, does come off and he does it several times a year. And over time, and many, many labs that we've run on this man, we've noticed that when he's on Anovar towards the end of the cycle, mid to the end of the cycle, and even after to some degree, we'd see the proteinuria. It was always there. And then when he would discontinue the Anovar within four to six weeks, around this time period, it would, it would diminish down to one plus um, even trace and this time right here, look at these labs here, it went down completely to zero. Now, I, I have sent him to a nephrologist in his state and the nephrologist agreed, not knowing Anavar and that it runs through the kidney and all these things, but he agreed that this man's kidneys are safe for today. In, in other words, his chemistries and his cystatin C and his estimated GFR, which I'll talk about later, they've changed some of these things, was okay and his kidney function is normal. He's actually not hypertensive. He's otherwise very lean, very handsome guy and he's in great shape. So he did agree that the proteinuria was from the Anovar and the steroids, and he's such a nice doctor. We actually had to blow through at least one other doctor that wasn't so nice or wasn't even accessible and I don't think really knew anything. This guy really did know stuff. This is a real internist who is a nephrology doctor and he was a sweetheart. 
and I commend him for working with us. This is harm reduction, obviously. So let's talk about the mechanism now of how Anovar and other anabolic steroids can lead to renal uh, kidney dysfunction. It's silent, guys, in the beginning, but it's definitely multifactorial. The concerning piece in this case is a condition called focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. This is a condition where the kidneys become damaged and they start to spill protein first. You start to get edematous. It starts to affect the kidneys are failing. There's issues going on. And it happens really where you see the proteinuria first in many instances, but not always, versus the chemistries in that estimated GFR right in the creatinine. Now, the mechanism of action, in addition to how Anivar itself, because it's renally cleared, can hurt the kidney is as follows. Directly and indirectly. Directly, the anabolic antigenic steroid chemistry metabolism itself, because it, it's mediating and it's being cleared through the kidney, right, versus the liver itself. Now, when you take more and more doses, higher and higher doses of Anivar, it starts to be cleared through the liver. It's very simple. It's why you could see the LFTs go up. And there's genetics on this, I've determined when I'm working with other nephrology doctors and also hepatology. Those are liver doctors, all internal medicine doctors like myself. So we've discovered these things, a lot of fingerprint stuff going on, guys. But in, in addition to the direct mechanism of action directly on the nephron itself, that's the functional unit of the kidney, you have beyond the metabolism, you have the dose, so how much you're taking, the duration. And this is how it will disrupt that renal physiology, pathophysiology, if you will, leading to inflammation and in interior, really, really internal inflammation and scarring of the kidney itself that leads to the beginning. And if you're not monitoring this and you're not watching for this significant chronic kidney disease, and of course, end-stage kidney disease requiring dialysis and renal transplantation. Okay, now that was direct. Those are direct mechanisms, directly on the kidney. Now indirect, which is so important for you guys to understand. Indirectly, hypertension. Steroids cause hypertension. You may just have hypertension. I have hypertension. I have to treat it without steroids. But if you're, if you're just eating too much because you want to gain weight and you're bulking and all this stuff and you're young, you're middle-aged or older, or you just have hypertension because a lot of people do, especially as you get older, things break. You're going to get hypertensive. The steroids can worsen that. Anivar, we know, <clears throat> in a dose-dependent fashion, can lead to hypertension for men and women. There's no question on that. What else? Indirectly, NSAIDs, kind of indirect, but it's an indirect etiology, but it will cause direct disease because non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like, like Motrin, ibuprofen, naproxen, there, there's Mobic, right, Meloxicom, which is a great, a great NSAID for, especially for the power lifters and for, for the strong men, I know they like that drug. You can Google this and look it up. You'll see it. Those are renal toxic. But of course, if you use a little bit of it and you use it occasionally, it's not renal toxic. This is the whole thing. You know, you have to look at everything, guys, is a cumulative area under the curve for adverse multifactorial issues. This is how I look at medicine. It's how you look at the medical world. So other renal toxic issues, you know, directly. There's the hypertension, the NSAIDs, equipoise and trend. It, it's really not known that if you look at the data itself, the, the clinical data apart for itself, it, it's being anecdotal. Just looking at so much data, that these are strong steroids and there's some predilection for men having worse in kidney disease, it appears on some of these stronger drugs. Of course, there's independent use, 
There's going to be doses, taking time off, breaks, and your other medical issues, your genetics, how old you are, and so on and so forth. Additionally, other supplements, other medications are just so important to understand here indirectly, really itself, but that they will have direct effects on the kidney, but they're indirect for this presentation. And lastly, in this, in this mechanism of action, the genes, African-American gentlemen, you guys are definitely at a slight increased risk for FSGS and kidney disease itself. And that's multifactorial too, but it really is true when you Google that and you look at that and you look at that from a, a paleontologic kind of genetic standpoint, it's true. So we've got to be really careful with you guys on this stuff, true. We've got to be careful with anyone. But again, you have to understand your history, understand how to protect and who you are. And that's why I'm here for you guys as an, as an internal medicine doctor just taking care of men on androgens. Now, how to protect? You know, it's common sense. Take breaks, keep the doses down, know your ABCDs on the Anabolic Doc app. You have to start off and understand your health history. And that's why the Anabolic Doc app is here for you to understand the breakdown of your own health history and utilize your own healthcare resources with doctors, nurse practitioners, physician's assistant, right in your own backyard. That's the plan of the Anabolic Doc app. Aggressive and early monitoring is gonna be key. And this is how I found this and all these issues on my own patients. I'm very aggressive on monitoring these guys and not just looking at labs and saying, oh yeah, you're on steroids. Uh, we would assume everything's gonna look bad. Just, um, just run it for a while and so on and so forth. Take this and that and the other thing and don't worry about it. Guys, some things on the labs are much worse than others, man. Having protein in your urine, again, there can be trace. And if you have proteinuria in your urine, you have to see a nephrologist or an internist like me to determine is it something, a normal variant, or is it, is it something that's not a normal variant? And do you have one of these kidney diseases? Again, there's a bunch of them. IJ nephro nephropathy, right? Chris Bumstead has this, not FSGS, but IGA nephropathy, guys, it's complicated, very complex. So the aggressive and the early monitoring, what I want you guys to do, that's why I'm here to help. Comprehensive, met this is labs, comprehensive metabolic panel. It's got the kidney and the liver and the glucose, okay? LFTs, it's got that estimated GFR we'll talk about in a minute. Urinalysis, get a urinalysis. You, you can get a microscopic, you can look for, you could do one of, the, one of these more specific urinalysis just to look for proteinuria that we use for diabetics, but just get a basic urinalysis, guys, to start. And if you don't like something, you could run a cystatin C. Now, let me talk about the new estimated GFR, those that glomerular filtration rate guidelines that we have new in 2021 that came out because they, they, they wanted to remove race out of um, determinants as much as they could because of obviously potential for inequality. And I don't want to get into the politics in this, guys, because I think you guys know how I feel about some of this stuff. You know, we're not going to get into it right now, but you guys know that I'm here for every man, fucking real man, and it's just a brotherhood for all of us, guys. But the truth is they made this move on it, and here's what it can do, because I just read an article about this, it can potentially lower, it's a false number, lower number that may not be really true, a lower GFR for African American people. And then on the flip side, it can show a falsely elevated GFR for, for non-black people. So we know that for the African American guys, they may fall into a category of having a lower GFR that may not be true and they're gonna get early detection, but that early detection could certainly be great, but it could also lead to more discrimination inside the, the, uh, the medical system where they're not gonna be eligible uh, based on different criteria with the GFR. So I want you guys to understand that. Now, what can you do about that? <sighs> know your stuff, really come to the app, work with 
doctors and great nurse practitioners like me that are very educated and they're very much into data and academics like me. Take an average. Take an average. Don't just look at one number. Consider supplementation like creatine. If you're on creatine, which I love creatine, it's a great supplement, but it's going to affect it. these new uh, um, estimations. They're, they're not useless when you're doing creatine, but they're very they're going to be picking it up. So it's going to it's going to the machine is measuring what's in your in your circulatory system in your blood from a supplement. And it's causing a false elevation of the creatinine. I mean, come on, guys, of the creatinine, and then therefore an inverse lowering of the GFR. The inverse relationship, guys. It's very crude, this stuff. It's not perfect. So, and also, if you're training really, really hard, exercise can break that down the tissue because you're training like a beast and it's going to affect that too. And hydration status that if you're not adequately hydrated, it looks like when we look at the BUN creatinine, well, we, maybe we're not sure. Maybe you were dehydrated. And, but then it, maybe it's true and you're, you're hydrated enough. The hydration thing, I think, is kind of overblown because when you're in the ER and you're working in the ER or on the clinic and in the, in, in, in the hospitals and out in different fields and ICUs and all the th places I worked in my life over the last 20 years or more, including my residency training in med school, you, you just, you just, the average bear is just like regularly hydrated, and we're looking at those numbers. And the kidney, especially when you're young, it, it, it has, it's, it's strong, and it, it, it has built-in reserve, so it shouldn't look like it's an abnormal reading. But again, if it is, repeat it. Just don't look at one number and flip out. Just look at the number and repeat it. Understand you have to be in a good, we're all over the world here together, guys, right? So understand where the source is where you're getting your labs and go to a very, very validated, great lab place. Okay, what do you do to be super, super safe and, and monitoring yourself? Blood pressure. Blood pressure itself is going to be number one outside of the steroids and your, your age and your genetics. There's no question you want to keep your blood pressure. I got right here less than 128, less than 80, because it's really around 130. That's that cutoff. I want to be academic for you guys. But I like my blood pressure just when I'm checking it in the morning, in the afternoon, and I'm chilled out, I'm relaxed. I like my blood pressure less than 120 and less than 80. That's just for me, right? That's perfect blood pressure. So if you're in this range of 128 and 80, you're technically on the 80, you're stage one hypertension. And, the, and under being under 130, you're in this prehypertension stage. Just being honest with you guys, when you look at that, if you're around 30, 130 and above, they've lowered all these numbers. So again, the blood pressure itself is going to be something, not one reading, guys. You have to understand the variability and is the cuff size right? Is it being measured? Is the technology? Don't get the wrist cuff. You got to get the, 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 the arm cuff. It's best to have someone check at both arms, sitting down. You should be relaxed. All right. Next, limit protein. I'm going to put a question mark here because, you know, the old classic, it's, it's very interesting if you talk to nephrology doctors and if your kidneys are healthy and you're young, protein is not toxic on the kidney. But it, once you have diseased kidneys, Protein is toxic. Get your head around that one. So, but what, at what stage are you? Are you, is, are your kidneys really, maybe potentially quietly, you have, there's more people that have chronic kidney disease than you could imagine. It's all silent. And, and there's some hand waving on it, right? Like a lot of these other numbers, it's hand waving. So you really, really want to be conservative. And I don't know if that two grams per body, per, per pound, the old bros and stuff. I mean, it's a classic way to go when you're young and you're anabolic. You, you need protein. You need protein. But I'm going to let that one sit here and I want to see some comments from you guys because that's kind of controversial right now. And I want to give you guys great information. I don't want to give bad information and say, guys, like, don't take protein and keep it down, you know, and all this. No. But again, if your kidneys are diseased, these doctors who are kidney doctors, they're going to say that it is going to be toxic on the kidney, but that's with it once your kidney's diseased. God, I'm so scared of kidney disease and heart disease. Just, just me, right? You guys should be the same. 
limit the NSAIDs. You could take them, but I mean, if you're popping them every day and taking them, when you look at the power lifters and the bodybuilders I've taken care of, the, the two things they did, beyond the steroid use and just pounding it for years, you know, they, they, they blood pressure, they did not hammer on. And you could, we'll talk about in the end what the plan, the treatment it can be. You know, they, they, they didn't monitor aggressively for what was going on with the proteinuria and not to mention the renal function with the GFRs, with or without estimations and so on and so forth, just not knowing going seeing doctors, hypertension and, and, and NSAIDs. Absolutely, those two things, I have to say it over and over. The, the, the hypertension and the utilization of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs chronically too much in the mix destroy the kidney and the heart itself, heart failure, whole other topic. So now, harm reduction, guys, harm reduction. You, you got to imagine you want to use every single piece, keep the steroids down, take breaks off, know who you are know who you are. If you have chronic kidney disease in the family, say for an example, you're an African-American guy or just a regular guy and in the world, doesn't even matter, it's, it's, it's in families. Uh, if you're Chris Bumstead, I mean, you wanna be careful with Anavar or steroids. It, you just wanna be careful from a cumulative standpoint. Now, TRT is different, guys. TRT is different. And you want to be careful with too much TRT because of direct and indirect effects, blood pressure. See, we're back in, in this A, B, C, D. A, 1, C, blood pressure, cholesterol, cardiac, D, red blood cells, right deposition disease. Now, harm reduction. This guy, this guy itself, our plan was no more Anivar. He, he sees the damage on and off, on and off, and we're going to just have him just on TRT. Now, let's talk about this. I'd like to give the guy an uh, a ARB or an ACE inhibitor. I'd like Telmosartan better. And his doctor agreed with that, but his blood pressure may not tolerate it because he's not hypertensive at all. This guy's blood pressure is perfect. Now that's going to change. Now if you're not, see, here's the trick, guys. If you're not perfect, if your blood pressure is 130, I would say high 120s or the diastolic, uh, blood pressure is in the mid upper 80s. Boom! It's do a diet, lose weight, cut the sodium, do cardio, do as much as you can. And then why wouldn't you utilize an ARB or an ACE inhibitor, or maybe your calcium channel blocker, maybe a thiazide? Again, these are the core. These are the classic drugs that we use, and that can protect you. This is what I do, and with the grace of God, my vital signs. And my labs are perfect and I'm freaking almost 60 guys and I'm still looking to get a big bench. And I'm on testosterone and I've added some of this stuff in, but I'm humble for it and it scares me that these things can happen. So keep the doses down. And then the last piece for the harm reduction is more academic, sodium glucose co-transporter 2s. You know, the, you could look at these drugs and they're clear now for diabetes, heart failure, and kidney disease. I really think some of these guys maybe should be on these drugs. There's no question, but they're not being utilized to the extent that they should be. Once you have kidney disease, you absolutely, not to mention the heart's involved too. This is not diabetes. Most of you guys are not going to have that issue unless you're, you're a middle-aged or older guy, a little overweight, and you got type 2 diabetes and you're on testosterone. It's really not for this presentation. That's definitely going to be helpful. Again, our plan in the end, as I said, for this guy was just, bro, you know I love you, man. Just want you to stay on testosterone, keep killing it. He is feeling good. His family's very happy that we discovered this and his kidneys are clean and the proteinuria went away. I hope it stays away. Monitor A, B, C, D with this guy. Want you guys to do it all for yourself. And I just want to have you guys keep killing it. So. Thank you so much, guys, for sticking with me in this presentation. It's, it's a common thing. It's more common than I think out there. Let's get some comments on this if you know anything about this with Anavar, or if you're concerned for it or if you've uh, enjoyed this video, you want to just make some comments. Thank you so much, gentlemen.
This is what you get with the Anabolic Doc app. Number one, a digital history and physical exam. Number two, weekly Zoom meetings with me. Number three, discounted commercial labs. Number four, weekly member only uncensored videos. Number five, Anabolic Doc's mailbag. You can't come to the meetings or you don't want to come to the meetings. You ask a question, I might respond to your question by making a video, put it back up on the app and you get to see your own question. Lastly, diagnostic and management library that is easily searchable by keywords.